Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to discuss today. I did get that special video out last night, and it was one of the more important of the entire series. But right now, it's another day, and we're going to spaceweathernews.com, finding the last 24 hours on our star relatively quiet. Patchy coronal hole signatures popping in and out north of the south polar opening, but also bottom left, did you see it? As one active region heads for the limb to the right, with all its sunspots decayed, Another is showing up at high latitude on the south this morning. We've got solid umbral cores beneath the bright umbral magnetic fields, but noteworthy they do still lack penumbra. We're going to the solar wind next. Telemetry more variable and slightly more intense on the right side of the chart, but it's all relative. Looking at the scale, we're still below 350 kilometers per second. That's a very weak stream of plasma. Geomagnetic conditions all quiet this morning. We did the Australia bushfires yesterday, and today it's the other half of the weather. The U.S. snowfall record here comes to us from South Dakota, but the scarier cold is still gripping India. It has been a week of record cold there. People are dying every night. It's basically survival mode until the system breaks. Over in Jakarta, they've got more rain than they can handle. Why not share some of that with southeastern Australia, eh? <laughs> like it's their choice. Anyway, we're heading over to Peru next, zooming down on the Sabancaya volcano. Put a nice set of pops up into the sky here, not a stratospheric injection, but still an impressive blast to behold. And we're off to the news where we'll start nice and easy with the ESA's 2019 highlights video. While they include their deep space science, say from XMM Newton, the focus was truly on their now greatly expanded Earth-observing fleet. Everything from rainfall to ice thickness to Earth's geomagnetic field and tracking of the geomagnetic jerks. Up next, a double-edged sword. First, it is always nice to get the electroquake confirmation that negative ion anomalies are preceding significant tremors. But in a throwback that ignores the last decade of studies on the subject, they blame radon gas emission as the ground begins to crack. In truth, they've seen this tied to the global electric circuit, ionospheric total electron content, and even geomagnetic storm activity. Right idea in general, but he's got an innocent man in cuffs on this one. Visual splendor blended with science next. Active galactic nuclei whose cosmic jets point in our direction are often called blazars. We often notice some of the more impressive charged particles accelerated by such cosmic engines, and the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics comes now with an example of a variability profile of a blazar jet that simply doesn't make sense. They say that the variability and the full range of light emission from radio to gamma is indicating that the blazar jet is indeed not always pointed our way, but has destabilized to a certain degree, and it is tearing around randomly and chaotically. For the uber astrophysics nerds like me, we've got a nice summary and problems ahead for stellar modeling. While very, very pretty, something tells me this temperature gravitational wave clumping simulation of the inside of a star is not quite right. But one thing that might be able to help into the future, not just inside the stars, but in Earth's magnetic field and in sunspots and in those active galactic nuclei, is rather than frozen in field lines and reconnection of the magnetism, it's the electric fields that are critical to the equilibrium structure. Remember, in Alfane, Birkeland, and Peratt's plasma cosmology, it is indeed the electric fields rather than the magnetic ones that determine the dynamics. Lastly, folks, in a piece trying to right the cosmology ship at the galactic level, we're highlighting critical assumptions that turned out to be erroneous, especially with a false sense of understanding and allowance for further suppositions to be made on that false data, specifically here about the nova events they used to date and distance the dwarf galaxies. Turns out, these smaller versions of what we know as the Milky Way might not be anything like we think we know. Folks, that video last night was indeed, in my mind, one of the more important ones in the series. It's not only perspective and facts, but a lesson that anyone can follow for their own location. Also, below that video, in the description box, is the list of the entire series, the full movie and the short version, all the special videos we did here in the last three weeks of 2019, and of course, the full 23-episode series that started it all. Catch up, guys. I'm going to kick it into another gear here in 2020, and we'll need to be on the same cosmic page. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.